set free is free indeed hallelujah and i'm so glad you're free i'm free we're all free through jesus christ welcome to oak orchard assembly of god this morning we gather together in the name of jesus. where two or three are gathered together in his name he is here in the midst so jesus is in the house this morning you may be seated Please refer to your bulletins for the announcements. The next Bible reading program is in your bulletin today. Make sure you get one of them and, and follow along. We're, we're closing in on all 52 weeks of the year. We have, will have read through the entire book of the Bible. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's always good when you read through the Bible. Amen. Hallelujah. Words of life come through that. Uh, tonight, of course, our uh, Reverend Richard Rockhine is here with us this morning, but he's going to be with us tonight as well in Adult Praise, Prayer, and Share, our Bible Kids Club at 6 o'clock, along with Youth Group, all uh, gathering together tonight at 6 o'clock. Then on Monday is our Men of Iron meeting at 7 p.m. right here. All you men are invited on out. We have a great time. We're learning some great things on how to be that courageous man that God has called us to be. It's entitled Stepping Up uh, by Dennis Rainey. We have a great time of encouragement, fellowship, food. Come out. That's tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Then next Sunday, the 13th of November, and I'm very uh, excited about this. We know that it is Veterans Day weekend, and we always celebrate our veterans and appreciate so much what they have done 
for our country. But uh, the main feature of that service is going to be the dedication of the flagpole that's out front to Pastor Stanley Thurber, who for 41 years served as lead pastor of this church, and we're going to uh, honor him by dedicating that flagpole uh, in his honor. And so that's part of next week's uh, service. So all of you servicemen, all of you veterans, make sure you come and be a part uh, of this great service next week, and that's November 13th. Now, Diane and I will also be going down to Syracuse uh, for Convoy of Hope's Rural Compassion Weekend, and we've done this for a number of years, and, and Convoy of Hope pours a blessing on our community uh, by bringing back a truckload uh, of goods, canned goods, socks, uh, cleaning supplies, all kinds of things that we can bless our community with. So that'll be set up uh, next Sunday as well in the uh, in basement of the church, and we'll find great homes and places to bless uh, people with this fall season and this Thanksgiving season. So that's next week as well. I think that concludes our announcements this morning, except for one really, really, really really, really great, important milestone in the life of someone in our congregation this morning. 90 years old, tomorrow. And I'm going to ask her to stand so that you can all look at her. Mrs. Fullman is going to be 90 years old tomorrow. Take a look at her. This is not your usual 90-year-old. I mean, she looks younger than I do. You look younger than I. Congratulations. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mrs. Bowman. Happy birthday to you. Now, when they say you've reached the big 9-0, now that's a real big number. And that's a, that's a real big 9-0. A couple of days ago, Sid Cree celebrated his 93rd birthday. And he's another one that you'd never guess. Uh, he's not here with us this morning, but another one that you would never guess. He was 93 years old. God has just blessed uh, these folks with longevity, faithfulness in the body of Jesus Christ. And we so honor you. Uh, this morning, and all of our faithful uh, folks here this morning. Hallelujah. Well, I just wanted to add one thing to the Veterans Day service. All of you veterans, if you can still get into your uniform or have a uniform, I'd like you to wear it. I'd like you to wear it. Um, and maybe you can only wear part of the uniform. That would be okay uh, as well. I know it's a big lift uh, for, for a lot of us, but uh, I would appreciate it if you would do that. No pun intended. Praise God. Would you stand with me as we invite God's presence in this place today? Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. I'm going to pray for our country during this opening prayer and just want to share with you how important it is that we as Christians first, uh, but secondly as citizens of the United States of America, as we, I believe, embark on one of the most pivotal elections uh, in our country's history, that you take this election seriously and make every effort if you can vote and are eligible to vote, to vote. Inform yourself of the candidates, ask the Spirit to guide you, and then cast your vote on Tuesday. We need the church, the body of believers in the United States of America, to rise up and do their duty and vote on Tuesday. Almighty God, you are Almighty God. There is none beside thee. You are the creator of all things. 
Nothing is in existence except by your hand, Jesus. Father, I am so thankful, as I'm sure everyone here is this morning, that you're a God that could just wipe us out because of our sin. But instead, you, you love us with an undying love, and you're not willing that we perish, but that we all come to repentance. And your son, Jesus Christ, gave his life on our behalf, paid the price, paid the penalty for our sin. Oh, God, we're grateful. We're thankful for our salvation. Lord Jesus, I pray by your precious Holy Spirit that you would sweep over this place May our spirits, Lord, be uplifted in your presence. Lord, we honor you today and we praise you and we worship you today. We know, Lord God, that you are concerned about our lives, about the details of our lives. You have a plan for us. But you also have a plan for the United States of America. Lord God, I pray that your will would be done on Tuesday. Lord, you raise up, you take down, clean house, do whatever you have to do. But Lord Jesus, I pray for a spirit of revival to sweep across this land in the name of Jesus, that we would recognize you once again, O oh God, that you are sovereign, that you are preeminent, that you are God above all gods. There is none beside thee. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Do a work in our heart, in our land, in our minds, in our souls. Lord Jesus, we pray for all of those that have not yet come to know you as their personal Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit, do a work in each and every mind and heart. Convict, convince, O oh God, by your, your Holy Spirit. Draw them to yourselves. I pray that we, your people, Lord God, would stand up. Lord, being clothed with your righteousness, Lord God call sin, sin in our life. Deal with it. Lord, ask for forgiveness. Repent, Lord God, and then go out into this world and let our light shine, Lord, the light of Jesus Christ, Lord. Send us, use us, move us, I pray in Jesus' name. Lord, for uh, many that need a healing touch in their body today, Lord God, do your miraculous healing power. All healing comes from you. We give you thanks for all healing in Jesus' name. Lord God, those that need to be restored, reconciled, Lord God, changed in Jesus' name, do your work, I pray, O oh God. And Lord, I thank you that we have victory over the adversary, the devil, through the blood and power of Jesus Christ, Lord, and we claim that victory in Jesus' name. Now, Lord God, I pray for the anointing on this service. I pray uh, for our worship. May it be pleasing in your eyes. May we give you praise and glory. Lord, anoint Lord Brother Rockhine this morning in the power of the Holy Spirit to bring the truth of your word in Jesus' name. Oh, God, we pray all these things in your great and wonderful name. And everyone said, amen and amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Psalm 98. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained him the victory. The Lord has made known his salvation. His righteousness has revealed in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his mercy and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Hallelujah. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Bring forth in song, rejoice and sing praises. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of the psalm, with trumpets, the sound of a horn. Shout joyfully before the Lord and King. Let the sea roar in all its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands, let the hills be joyful together before the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. With righteousness he shall judge the world, and with people with equity. Hallelujah. Has God not revealed himself by his creation this past week? Look at the beauty that he brings to western New York. Hallelujah. We give glory uh, to God. Hallelujah. But he will be the same God when the rain comes. He'll be the same great God when the snow comes. Hallelujah. And we will continue to rejoice in Jesus' name. Let's worship together. Hallelujah.
the everlasting God, the King of kings and Lord of lords. We give you all the honor and all the glory that you are so worthy of today. shed blood and his broken body are what brings us to the Lord's table. You may be seated as we prepare our hearts. To follow along in the commandment of Jesus himself. You see, this is 
why Jesus came. He came because he loved us, wanted to redeem us. is being passed out. Paul was encouraging or admonishing the believers in Corinth as they weren't properly, all of them, recognizing the blood and body of Jesus Christ. And he didn't want them to partake of this in an unworthy manner, but what makes us worthy to partake is our relationship with Jesus Christ. And so it says, but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthy, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the body of Jesus Christ. So let us take a moment and examine ourselves to see if we're in proper relationship with God. Humble yourself before him. Ask him to forgive you of your sin. Ask him to purify your heart. Right now, just take a moment. received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Father God, as we hold the emblem of your broken body in our hands this morning, we thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for the pain, the ridicule, the suffering, the persecution that you went through. Even called the devil. But God, you remain true to the will of the Father that sent you. You went to that cross and you were beaten and scourged, and bled, and suffered. Father, we remember with thankful hearts what you have done for us. Thank you, Jesus. Let us partake together of this emblem of Christ's broken body.
the same manner, he also took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. This was a new covenant, a new covenant of grace, one sacrifice, once and for all, never to be repeated. Let's pray. Father, as we hold in our hands this morning the emblem of the shed blood of your Son, we are unworthy. And you invite us to come to this table and to lay down our sins before you. And for that reason and that purpose today, Lord Jesus, are sorry. We repent. We turn from them. And we vow, O oh Lord, to walk in the newness of life that you have purchased with your precious blood. Father, at this altar we also lay down our differences. We lay down, O oh Lord, those things that divide us. And Lord Jesus, we just ask you to help us to leave them at this altar, Lord Jesus. Help us to leave them with you. Because you have bridged the gap that divided us from our Heavenly Father, who loved us so much. You have bridged the gap. And as we partake today, we participate in this small way by agreeing and accepting and receiving the mercy, the grace, and the compassion that comes to you. We ask your blessing as we partake. In Jesus' name, amen. Shall we partake together? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Blessed redeemer. 
scripture from Psalms today he said shout unto the Lord do I have any Bills fans here this morning raise your hand if you're a Bills fan okay I'm, I'm waiting okay good 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 now, now this guy's a Bills fan but he's from Pittsburgh oh I'm sorry When we gather together and worship God in spirit and in truth and talk about the victory that Jesus won on the cross of Calvary, that's the ultimate victory. Yet you know how sometimes are we so unwilling to give him praise and glory and shout the victory because of him, even maybe a little less than if Stefan Diggs would score a touchdown today. Some of us might come off of our couch and might even go, yes, like that, and shout for the Buffalo Bills. Does God deserve any less? I know it's not like a crescendo at the end of a touchdown, and then he did it over 2,000 years ago, the victory on the cross of Calvary. But we need to get out of our comfort zone and say, I don't have to be worked up into a frenzy to give God praise and glory and shout unto the Lord the voice of triumph because we live in victory day by day. Amen? But I'm going to give you an opportunity right now before we take the offering. And by the way, the offering that we take today uh, is going to be a love offering. If it's not designated tithes or other things, it's going to be a love offering for our brother Richard Rockheim. So make a check out to Oak Orchard. Uh, but all of the offering is going to go uh, to him and to his ministry. But I'm going to give you a chance, all right? I'm going to declare the victory that Jesus won on the cross of Calvary. And then I want you to respond like you believe it. Like your name's written down in glory. Like you have your future in heaven with Jesus Christ. That he's giving you life abundantly. I declare this morning that Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords, has defeated sin and the devil on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah! satisfying in my spiritual walk with Jesus Christ when his people, when Jesus fans gather together and worship him in spirit and in truth. We're all on the same team. We're all on the same page. We're all worshiping the same God. Hallelujah. That gets me pumped up and I know that it does you this morning. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. You may be seated. kids are going to come up here and the ushers are going to come and wait upon us for our morning tithes and offerings. Kids, join me up here uh, for Children's Church. All of the uh, shoe boxes that are here uh, on the platform, there's a lot more that have been taken. We want you to bring them all in and Kathy has informed me that she's going to extend it another week. There's still some empty boxes out in the foyer. Take them, bring them back next week. And we'll get them where they need to go. What a great ministry this is. Good morning, children. God bless you. Say good morning, Pastor. Good morning, children. Good morning. How you doing? God bless you. Hallelujah. Were you cheering? Were you cheering? For Jesus. 
put him on the spot. Hallelujah. I know all these kids up here, they love Jesus. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for your love that has been extended over all of creation. Hallelujah. Thank you for these children. Thank you for their lives. Pray, Lord God, that you would go with them as they go to Children's Church. May they know your great love. Anoint the teachers in Jesus' name. Lord, we worship you through our giving today. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. You take care of all of our needs according to your riches and glory. And we give back to you and we give into the ministry of Richard Rockhine this morning. We pray that you would bless it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now I saw he came in late and I said, Sid wasn't here this morning, but Sid Cree is here, fresh off of his 93rd birthday. Let's give Sid a hand this morning, Brother Sid. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sid. I have to tell you, and I hope that you all agree, that these faithful souls in the body of Jesus Christ are a tremendous blessing to the body of Jesus Christ. For they have been faithful. They have endured. They're getting closer to the end and to their reward. But praise God, they are faithful. They're here, and they encourage me. Do they encourage you? Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you. If you could cue up that first song. It is my extreme pleasure. This is my 20th year of being lead pastor here at Oak Orchard Assembly of God. And evangelist Richard Rockhind has been with us every step of the way. Every two years you come and minister the truth of God's word in power and anointing. And I want you to know that we appreciate that. Uh, we appreciate you never deviating from the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ and preaching it from the bottom of your heart because I know that you have a deep relationship with him. And he comes to us from a, a town outside of Pittsburgh, but I guess you could say he hails from Pittsburgh, but because of his kids who are big Josh Allen fans, he is a, a Buffalo Bills fan as well. And you know, I kind of appreciate that. You've been converted. Hallelujah. You're on the right side. You're on the right side. But let's give a warm Oak Orchard welcome to Evangelist Richard Rockhine. Come and pray. I'm a Jesus fan. Come on, I'm a Jesus fan. Good morning. One by one, Jesse's sons stood before the prophet. The father knew that a king would soon be found. And each one passed except the last. No one thought to call him. Surely he would never wear a crown. But when others see a shepherd boy, God may see a king. Come on, you know the story. Even though your life seems filled with ordinary things, just a moment he can touch you everything will change when others see a shepherd boy God may see a king come on let's give the Lord a hand this morning if you know it sing it with me one by one, problems come, dreams get shattered. We've all been there. 
And sometimes it's hard to understand. Listen, but things like chance and circumstance, they don't really matter. Come on. Our Father holds tomorrow in his hands. And when others see a shepherd boy, God may see a king. Even though your life seems filled with ordinary things, in just a moment, he can touch you. Everything will change. Others see a shepherd boy. God may see a king. Come on, here's the good part. Well, he wasn't the oldest. He wasn't the strongest chosen on that day. But when the giant fell, the nation trembled when they stood in his way yeah come on and when others see a shepherd boy god may see a king even though your life seems filled with ordinary things in just a moment he can touch you Everything will change when others see a shepherd boy. God may see a king. Would you sing it with me? Come on, real simple. Here we go. God may see a king. All God wants is somebody to say yes, man. All God's looking for is a servant, someone that will step in, step up, step out. This is the rocket science. Come on, give the Lord a hand this morning. I got to tell you, I don't know where to begin. This has been an outstanding service at Oak Orchard. AG, you guys are living large here in Medina. Or as the GPS says, Medina. How many know the GPS always messes up the names of places? I'm like, I don't want to go to my, whatever they said, I want to go to Medina. Is that how you say it? But what a joy to be with you, the worship leader, the worship team. These guys are on. Give them a hand. <laughs> Reverend Don Snyder's in the house. Where's he at? He disappeared. Where is he? Okay, thank you. I've known him for many years. What a joy to see you. What a joy to be with you. I don't sing much anymore, but the pastor said, I, I think they're used to you singing, so I'm singing. But I, I'm kind of getting given some of that up. Some of you are like, oh, I was praying that he would give it up. But, uh, but what a joy. Is, is, is Kathy here? There's probably more than one Kathy, but there, I'm looking for the Kathy who cleans. I'm looking for the Kathy I'm looking for the Kathy who sets up the apartment like nobody else. Thank you, Kathy. And I know there's a team that, that, that puts together the decor and the, the decorations and the, you guys have done so well. Everybody's pointing to Kathy. Kathy, there it is again. Well, you know, the Bible says, don't praise yourself, but let a leather praise you. You know, what is it? So, something like, don't, don't, don't talk about yourself, but let the lips of others. I completely butchered that scripture, but you understand what I mean. Don't brag, let others brag on you. That's my version. But thank you, Kathy. Look, we're a team. All of us. We're a body. We're a family. We need one another. We all need him. I'm thankful for Pastor Dan and his lovely wife. I'm thankful for the leaders and the board and, and the, the two guys that are twins that always throw me off every time I come here. I'm thankful. What a great service. Thankful for the kids' ministry. Man, the Lord is good. He's blessed you. You've got oxygen. 
Let's just bring it way down. I'm thankful I got in last night at 2 in the morning, but I was able to move the clock up to 1. I told my wife, is that more sleep? She said, not really. There was a terrible storm coming in. But when it rains, for me, that's a free car wash. Plus, the wind, the wind was blowing, so I got a nice blow dry. Come on. It's all good. If you have your Bible, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. But again, Pastor Dan, thank you for your leadership. I've been here many times with Pastor Stan Thurber, who certainly is a household name, excited about the, the uh, flag being dedicated. That's, I was getting choked up. I'm thankful for Pastor Dan and his ministry over the years. Every other year I come, I make the call every other year to go really wherever I go because nobody wants me every year, and I understand that. So every other year I come, but what a joy to be with you. Most of you I've met. Some of you I've not met. I want to say the Sunday school teacher, is it Lloyd? Brother Lloyd is back here. Lloyd did a great job today teaching. Give Lloyd a hand. He needs a raise, <laughs> but I love all of you. Go Bills. I'm from Baltimore. I grew up with Johnny Unitas. I grew up with the Colts. And then I was at Valley Forge and in ministry, and then there was that whole drama where the, the Baltimore Colts left and, I don't know, went to Indiana, then went to Cleveland, and I'm not sure how it all worked. And then, of course, we got the Ravens, who were dangerous. Lamar Jackson, you got to watch him. But I, I got married to a girl from Pittsburgh. My three kids and dog are all Pittsburgh fans. I, therefore, I've been converted. The Pittsburgh Steelers are not doing that well. I, my whole family loves, loves Josh Allen. We love the Bills. I'm up here every couple weeks. I've noticed how many times they've changed the stadium. Highmark, Era. What else was it? Wilson. I've seen it over the years. But I'm excited for Jesus. You understand. And i got to tell you, I agree with what the pastor said. we got to have that passion for God. And, in fact, I was reading the other day. I didn't study it yet, but I read it. You read it. And it kind of came out and spoke to me. The Bible does say, if you don't hate your mother and father. In other words, what it's saying is you're not supposed to hate people. But compared to him, you're to hate everybody. That's what it's saying. So the bills go, way to go, awesome. But next to Jesus, forget about it. He's worthy. He died on the cross. He shed his blood. He's coming back. He's faithful. He's with us. He forgives our sin. These other people can't do that. No bills, but Josh Allen? Nah, I don't think so. Come on, let's give the Lord another hand. Thank you, God. You can roll that song. I do apologize. I did not take my riddle in today. You gave me time when no one gave me time of day. You looked deep inside while the rest of the world looked away. And you smiled at me when there were just frowns everywhere. And you gave me love when nobody gave me a prayer. That's why I call you Savior. That's why I call you friend. You touched my heart. You touched my soul. You helped me start all over again. That's why I love you, Jesus. That's why I'll always care. You gave me love when nobody gave me a prayer. This is an old B.J. Thomas song. You gave me laughter 
after I cried all my tears. And you heard my dreams while the rest of the world closed its ears. This is my favorite part, listen. I looked in your eyes and I found the tenderness there. And you gave me love when nobody gave me a prayer. That's why I call you Savior. Would you sing it this morning? Everybody. That's why I call you Savior. That's why I call you friend. Come on. That's why I call you friend. Because you touched my heart. Sing. Because you touched my heart. You touched my soul. You touched my soul. You helped me start. You helped me start all over again. Hallelujah. That's why I love you, Jesus. That's why I'll always care. Come on, Oak Orchard, everybody together. You gave me love, but nobody gave me a prayer. It really doesn't get any better than that. Our world's a mess. Our world's in trouble, but he isn't. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Well, my family says hello. My wife has been here at least once or twice because we stayed in the apartment. She remembers it. My wife remembers things. I don't remember anything. I'm 57 and coming apart. Uh, we got 90 years old. You absolutely look outstanding. Thank you for whatever you're doing. <laughs> and I agree with the pastor, sticking it out, being faithful. Look, we don't have people faithful anymore. You have the elderly still coming to church. You have families that are all jacked up with stuff that aren't coming to church. We've lost, man. We've lost the value of family, marriage, church, faithfulness. There was a time when a handshake meant something. We don't live in that world anymore. The average family goes to church maybe twice a month, and they go to different places each time. What is that about? We go to church for maybe an hour, give God a tip, go to Applebee's. Every now and then we go to church, and we wonder why we got so much stuff going on. We've lost it. We've got to get back to the basics, going to church, coming to the altar, praying, loving on each other, serving. So thank God for this wonderful setup. Brother in the back, 93, is that you back there? Put your hand out there. I mean, look, these people are rock stars. Forget about Josh Allen, these guys right here. Well, my wife's doing well. My wife still works at the VA. She went to the University of Pittsburgh, is a social worker, but was recently hired on staff at our church as the kids director. So my wife has to put up with me, three teenagers and a dog, works at the VA, is the children's director at our church. She's also on the board. My wife's on the board. And about three or four months ago was their first board meeting. They have a board meeting the first Tuesday of the month. When she went to the first boarding meeting, board meeting, she came back. She said, honey, that is so boring. <laughs> I said, well, that's why they call it a board meeting. <laughs> they talked for the first 45 minutes about different keys in the building. So my daughter's 18. She's at Valley Forge University, University of Valley Forge. Our son Grant is almost 6'4". 17, loves the Lord, looking to probably go to Valley Forge as well. Our son Brady is 14. We're doing well, keeping busy, trying to be faithful. Amen. I wanted to mention very quickly, I've got my table in the back. I don't have any more CDs. I sold out. I still have cassette tapes. I, my kids go to a Christian school. I just preached there last Monday at the kids' Christian school, and I gave the tapes out just to the kids, I said, go home and show your parents. <laughs> but, I, but I'm also doing a, f a few things. Um, there are two pastors that have written some books. I didn't bring them today. I should have. I forgot to. But So I don't, don't, don't know why I brought that up. But 
Uh, I've got books that I'm selling for pastors, if you will, because I believe in what they're doing. But I wanted to mention some stuff that's right here in my hands. There's a ministry called Sunward. There's a piece of literature out there on the table. My daughter works for this ministry as much as she can. When she comes home on the weekends, she works been working there the last few years up until Valley Forge. She's there in the summer. But it's an inner city ministry uh, to young kids uh, in the Pittsburgh area. It's called Sunward. Uh, Dave Lewis and his wife are the directors. And I want to encourage you to maybe help them out. I don't get any of this money at all. But they made some really cool things. There are leather keychains. Christmas is coming up. These are really cool handmade leather keychains. There are also leather, leather, uh, what are these called? Bookmarks. These are leather bookmarks. I don't read that much, so I'm not sure what it is. Anyway, um, there's artwork. These are really cool pieces of art that the kids make and some of the uh, older kids make, and these, all the proceeds go toward this program. So if you can help us out, that'd be great. These are handmade leather Bibles, hand-stitched. There's only like four of them out there. If you're willing to buy one for a loved one, there's a price on them. There's only one of these left. This is a leather-bound devotional book. It's just, I don't think it's just blank pages for you to have a journal. That's what it's, it's a journal. So there we go. But so uh, again, these items are available. Uh, there's more stuff in the back. There's some larger pictures. Uh, there's also, I forgot, there, it's really cool. There are Christmas ornaments. It's a leather tree, and it's got a big that star with, with, with a hook on it. And so you can get those ornaments. Uh, I, forgot, I thought I had one with me, but everything's back there. Take a look at the stuff. Take a look at how big my family's getting, how they're growing up. Some of you remember when I first came and my, I didn't even have kids. In fact, you remember when I was still single. Oh, my gosh, that was a long time ago. Wow. <laughs> Father, thank you for this day. Bless your word. We love you. We adore you. We exalt you, and we praise you. Minister to hearts in the next few moments as we hear your word. In Jesus' name, come on, say amen. amen. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. I've entitled the sermon, I Found a New Life. How many of you have found a new life? Come on. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. You know it. You've read it. You've studied it. You can quote it. You've seen it up in the church or somewhere in someone's home. It's a well-known scripture. We're going to look at it and run with it. So the sermon title is, I Found a New Life. So real quickly, I'm going to teach you a song, and then we're going to get into the scripture and move here. But it says, I found the new life. We're going to do an acapoco. If the musicians want to come back and join me, that's fine. I'm not sure if you get paid for that, uh, but, uh, but we'll do an acapoco. Amen? That's acapello. I found the new life. I found the new life. If anybody asked you, what's the matter with you, my friend? Tell them that you are saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized. Jesus on my mind, I found a new life. Come on. I found a new life. I found a new life. If anybody asked you, what's the matter with you, my friend? Tell them that you are saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized. Jesus on my mind, I found a new. It says I found a new life. Not a new wife. A new life. Are you ready? I found a new life. Come on, hands. I found a new life. If anybody asks you, what's the matter with you, my friend, tell them that you are saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized, Jesus on my mind, I found a new life. One more time, I found a new life. Oh, you guys are good. If anybody asks you, what's the matter with, what are you going to tell them? Tell them that you are sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized, Jesus on my all right, now I'm a drummer. By the way, where's the drummer? The drummer, man, you are good, brother. You, you got you to gotta get the beat right. 
It's foot clap, foot clap, foot clap. Some of you, I know some of you is just pushing it, but the Bible says I can do all things through Christ. Foot clap, foot clap. I found the new life. I found the new foot clap, foot clap. If anybody asks you what's the matter with you, my Tell them that you are saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized. Jesus on my mind, I found new life. Again, I found a new life. Foot clap, foot. I found a new life. Oh, you got it. If anybody asks you, what's the matter with you? Tell them that you are saved. Now, hold on. How many know people are going to wonder? Some of you have people, your neighbors, your co-workers, your friends, your in-laws, your outlaws. You, you got people, and they're wondering, what is the matter with you? Why do you smile? Why are you happy? Why do you go to church? Why do you care? Why do you care? You say, well, start singing a song. I've been saved. By the way, who's been who's saved? Sanctified. Holy Ghost filled. Water baptized. Jesus on my Okay, we're going to have some fun real quick. This is the save section. Ready, save. It's you. Save. Save. One more time, save. Sanctified. Sanctified. You got it. Holy. Hold on. Let me get the mic. Holy Ghost filled. Holy Ghost filled. Save. Sanctified. Holy Ghost filled. Jesus on my mind. Oh, I said I forgot it. Saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized. Water baptized. Have you all been water baptized? Awesome. We got a tank over there, I bet. Okay. Water baptized. And you guys are Jesus on my mind. You got the singer helping you out. Jesus on my mind. I found a new life. We all bring it together. You see how that's going to work? Are you ready? Some of you guys are going to be signing autographs later. I found a new life, everybody. I found a new life. Foot clap, foot. If anybody asks you, what's the matter with you? Tell them that you are. I found a new life. Come on, everybody. I found a new life. I found a new life. If anybody asks you, what's the matter with you? Tell them that you are. I found a new life. One more time. I found a new life. Come on. I found a new life. If anybody asks you, what's the matter with you, my friend? Tell them that you are. I found a new life. Nice job. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, reading from the NIV, listen. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. Come on, say amen. amen. The King James says it like this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Amen. The New Life Testament says this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. The New Revised Standard says, so if anyone is in Christ... There is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. Aren't you thankful that I have found a new life? And if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature, a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. I'm so thankful that I'm saved. I'm so thankful that I've been born again. I'm so thankful that I've become a Christian and have invited Jesus into my life. How about you? Amen. I got saved in 1982 in Baltimore, Maryland 
at Trinity Assembly of God. And after I graduated from Valley Forge, I was, well, even during my season at Valley Forge, I was, I did an internship at my church and still keep in touch with people from the church. But I got saved in 1982. I'll never forget it. I come from a large church. It was like 1,500 people in the 80s. We had, you know, uh, Jim Baker. We had Amy Grant. We had the power team. We had Petra and Mylon Lefebvre. I'm dating myself. Some of you have no idea who those bands are. We had the Imperials. We had Michael Card. We had Honey Tree. Come on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we had those guys. And I'm a drummer, so I was all about meeting the band and looking at CDs and cassettes and meeting people and setting up, tearing down. I was in. But I remember when I got saved, I don't remember what the sermon was on. I can't remember what Earl Baldwin, Dr. Earl Baldwin, who was my pastor, who went to Valley Forge way back when they didn't have food and shelter, the EBI days or something. But I remember, I couldn't tell you the sermon, but I remember I heard the altar call. And Dr. Earl Baldwin, who's still with us, said, if you need Jesus, come forward. I went forward and became a Christian. I remember it. And my mother got saved a year before I did. So I got saved in February 28, 1982. My mother got saved in 1981. And my mother didn't even go to church. She got saved in her car. She was flipping through the radio and came across Charles Stanley in Touch Ministries. My mother got saved in the car and started supporting. Remember the magazines? Yeah, for years. My mother didn't even go to church. She came home changed. A year later, I got saved, and I was changed. Aren't you thankful that you have been saved? Oh, come on. I was at Walmart last week, and I'm doing the self-checkout, and I had my card in, and I'm, I'm getting ready to put my card in, and I turned around, and some dude put his card in. I said, wait a minute. I said, what are you doing? I said, what are you doing? You put your card in. I'm, and he, I looked at him. He looked at me. He said, you're Richard Rockhound. Huh? You, you've been to my church. It's an open Bible church in the Pittsburgh area. His name is Tony. He's a really good electric guitar player. So Tony's behind me. I'm getting my stuff, trying to pay. He put his credit card in. I said, what are you doing? He said, I, I know you, and, and you've been to my church. And he said, I wanted to pay for your groceries. How about that? And my first thought is, can I go back and get more? <laughs> it was still about 70 bucks worth of stuff. So, Isn't it great when someone pays? Come on, man. He's forgiven us. He saved us. We have a new life. There's hope. He's redeemed us. I love that word redeemed. It means to be paid for. He paid for us. That's what communion is. We remember that he paid the bill. That's it. I also love the word reconciliation, which means to be brought back. See, understand this. A quick synopsis. We were made by God, for God, to serve God, to follow God, to honor God. But sin came into the picture. Rebellion, they, you know, the blame game. Adam blamed Eve and Eve blamed the serpent. I mean, we're doing the same thing today. Nothing's changed. But we've been brought back to God because of what Jesus did on the cross. So real quickly, I want to go through four points to the scripture. I found the new life. 2 Corinthians 5.17. Number one, it says, if anyone's in Christ. Write that down. Are you in Christ? How many know that a lot of people are into a lot of things and it's not Christ? Let me say that again. There are a lot of people that are into a lot of things and they're not Christ. If anyone's in Christ. What does it mean to be in Christ? I'm going to tell you. It means thinking about what he did for you all the time. Living life realizing that he suffered for you. The price that was paid. The new life that he's made available. The plans he has for you. He died so you could live. 
He came, suffered, died, rose again, and is coming back for you. The whole package. Are you in his word? Are you in his presence? Are you in his will? I have a friend of mine that confessed to me recently. He said, I'm on Facebook before I even get out of bed. Is that the way you want to live? There are people that are in to a lot of things. But the scripture says, if you're in Christ, that's where I want to be. I read this the other day. And I'm not on Facebook because I don't know how to get on it. And I have no interest in it. And I got all, a lot of other things to deal with than Facebook. So it's not my thing. I'm not saying it's the worst deal in the world. But I did read this the other day. And for those who the shoe fits, you know, put it on. <laughs> I guess that's how it goes. Are you on Facebook more than your face is in the book? I want to be in Christ. Rather than belonging to the world, rather than getting caught up in all the drama, I've decided to follow Christ and put my hope in him. And when you're in Christ, you recognize and appreciate what he did for you, and that makes you want to live for him. Praise God. I want to be in Christ. Secondly, a new creature. Come on. How many are thankful that you're a new creation? You're not the same person. You've been born again. You're a new creature. You've got a new mind, a new heart, a new attitude, a new set of goals and agenda, a new purpose, a new mission, a new reason for living. Praise God. You know, I used to get a kick out of watching those uh, shows, Flipping Houses. How many know that's what Jesus did with all of us? He's the master carpenter. Come on. He's the master carpenter, man, with a cool tool belt. And when you look at people flipping houses, you redo the floor, redo the walls, redo the roof, get a whole new set of electrical. Aren't you thankful that we have been flipped by the master carpenter with a tool belt? He's got a hammer. You feel it. He's got a chisel. He's got a screwdriver. He's got some sandpaper. But I'm so thankful that he flipped me. Come on, I'm so thankful that I am born again in Jesus' name. Look, you can't even explain it. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I'm blind, but now I see. You know, some of you in this room, you've had people tell you, you've been, you're in a cult. You, you, you've been brainwashed. They got you. Well, the next time, it's, next time, it's, the next time someone says you've been brain, brainwashed, say thank you. You're actually right. How many of you are thankful that he, your brain's been washed in the blood of Jesus? Aren't you thankful that he took away your stinking thinking? So if anyone's in Christ, he's a new creature. Number three, the old has gone. Some of you talk different now, don't you? You don't think the same way. Your love for people, your love for the others, your love for the word, your love for the hurting, your love for the truth. Your, your, your sins are gone. Your addictions have been broken. Your habits, your routine, your way of thinking, how you treat others. It's awesome. That's the idea of sanctification. When you get saved, it's a one-time decision. But look at me. Sanctification is the rest of your life. Every day you're signing up. Every day you're saying, yes, God. Every day you're walking in obedience. You're in, his, you're in the army of God. You're in the family of God. So if anyone's in Christ, he's a new creature. The old is gone. And here we go with the fourth point as we close out. The new has come. How many enjoy new things? How many know God's good? New things are awesome. You know, and like I said, I got saved in 1982, and I, I dove in. You know, it's, it's amazing to me, Pastor. You know, these days, for whatever reason, you see a lot of people get saved, and, and they, they, they need discipling, which is true. They need some coaching, which is true. They need people to walk through life with them, which is true. But I will say for me, I, I needed all that, but I was so sold out that you didn't have to tell me what to do. When I got saved, I went to church. I just read the Bible, just kept reading it. 
I went to youth group. I was the drummer. I went to camp, convention, youth rallies, lock-ins, anything in the back I could sign up for, I did it. I just, I dove in. I, nobody had to tell me to go. I was, I, I was the first one signed up. And sometimes you wonder, well, what's happened all that? I mean, I would go to church on Thursday nights, and I wasn't even in the choir. I would just show up. I'm not even in the choir. Choir practice, you get it? So I'll never forget, man. Listen, I got saved, and back then I worked at IHOP, International House of Pancakes. So I would go home from school, have dinner, drive my sister and brother and others to youth group, go out to eat after youth group like the Pizza Hut or Wendy's or whatever we did back then. Shakey's, remember Shakey's? It's a pizza place anyway. Shakey's. Is that was that around here? Okay, cool. And then I would go and work at IHOP. I would work from eleven to seven. All night. You know what they called it? Bar rush. You know why? At 2 in the morning, when all the bars closed, they would come there and eat. So from like 2 to 4, it was completely packed. People were throwing up, fighting in the parking lot. All those syrups, those really yummy syrups, they would spill them and pour them all on the table for me to clean up later. But I was witnessing to everybody. There were drunks. There were people hurting. I loved it. Then at 7, when I got off, I would go to Dunkin' Donuts, which was across the street, and get donuts for my family. Say, oh, that's a really nice thing. Thank you. Thank you. And I did that on Friday and Saturday night and still went to church on Sunday morning with no sleep. Why? Because I love the Lord. And when I got saved, there was new stuff. A new love for people, a new love for just making a difference, a new love for God. How many know God has scriptures for you, relationships for you, opportunities for you, challenges for you? Psalms 40, verse 1, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me, and he heard my cry. He pulled me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire, and he set my feet on a rock. He gave me a firm place to stand, and he gave me a new song. He gives us a new song. Would you stand? If our worship team would come. I want to invite you in just a moment to respond to what the Lord said. Come back tonight if you can at 6. Bring a friend. Bring a neighbor. How many know that the number one way to get people to church is still personal invitation? You can send out a mailing and you can do Facebook and social media, but the best way is still asking people. You know why? Because it's the hardest. It's easier to just email. Easier to send a Facebook message, easier to just text. But when you actually talk to people or call someone or just invite them, that, that, just, that just cuts out a lot of the red tape and shows the people that the recipients, they really care about this. This church thing is serious, and they really do love God. So invite people. We pray for revival. The pastor prayed, and I'm all for it, but we got to get people. And so... I can't do it on my own. We all have a job to do. You got to get them. But what about you today? I don't know about you, but if anyone's in Christ, are you in Christ? Is your life what it should be? Is God looking down at you and he's happy with you? It's not a really complicated question at all. Because if you're not happy, chances are it's because you know he's not happy. And how many know that when God isn't pleased with you, you're not pleased with you, and no one else is pleased with you? It's amazing how when the Bible says, seek first his kingdom and all these things. We're worried about things. Seek him. Some of you, listen, in a moment I'm going to invite you to step out and recommit your life to Christ. You say, you know what, brother? I'm not in the Lord like I used to be. I'm not in Christ the way I want to be. I want to be in him. I don't want to be consumed with the world, social media, what everybody else says or thinks or does. I want to be in you, Lord. What about you? Are you in Christ? Secondly, what does it say? Very simply, if you're in Christ, secondly, it says you're a new creature. You're not the same. Remind yourself, that's not you anymore. You think different. You talk different. You act different. You walk different. And if you call yourself a Christian, but yet you're not living new, you know what that's called? False advertisement. Are you living the way you should? Are you experiencing the change that God made? How many of you backslide in your heart before it ever comes out? People that fall away from God, 
people that fall away from the Lord, it doesn't it just, just doesn't happen overnight. People don't have affairs overnight. People just don't go out and start drinking overnight. It starts in the heart. If you're in Christ, you're new. Thirdly, the old's gone. But you know what, Pastor? We're going to let the old go. Because how many know any day you choose, you can pick that old man up. You can start feeding it, loving it, putting it before God. It's called idolatry. Now, I'm all for the bills. I'm all for having fun. But he's God and God alone. The old is gone. Remember what he did for you to be forgiven. Remember the price that was paid for your old stuff to be gone. Don't bring it back. Don't live for yourself anymore. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful that I've been saved from myself because myself gets me in trouble. Anybody with me? Myself is the problem. And then lastly, new has come. Let God challenge you with new ventures, a new season, a new chapter, new songs, new scriptures, new opportunities, new relationships, new secrets of the kingdom that will reveal to you if you pray. So I don't know where you're at today, but some of you, listen, need to come and commit your life. Some of you need to get back to being reminded what Jesus did for your new life. Don't live for yourself. Repent of some things that have crept in. Some of you, listen, have pulled up the old man. I'm telling you now, let it go. We're new in Christ. Follow him. Be faithful to him. Be obedient to him. We're going to pray. I'm going to come up, and I'm going to ask you to join me. Some of you young people, I'm going to ask you to come and find a place. we got a boatload of oil up here to pray for people. Don't pass this up. Don't be so quick to leave or even stay where you're at. Close your eyes. Say, God, what does what I heard have to do with me? How many of God will show you? Put your hands up. Father, we commit ourselves to you. We've heard the word. Lord, we don't want to hear a good sermon. We want to be a good sermon. Help us to live faithful to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you step out and join me? The worship team is playing. If you want to scoot out, fine. Check out the table, fine. But there's nothing more important than right now. Maybe you need healing in your body. Maybe you need encouragement. Maybe you're dealing with frustration and anxiety and fear. Maybe you don't know what you need. Why don't you pray with somebody? Why don't you have somebody talk with you right now in the next few moments? Maybe you've got a tough week ahead. Some of you kids in school, struggles, battles, temptation. Maybe you need a healing in your mind. Somebody needs peace. Maybe you need direction. Maybe you've got some decisions to make this week. Look, I don't know. But God knows. God knows if you're hurting. God knows if you're discouraged. God knows if you're mad. Did you hear me? God knows if you're mad. God knows if you're confused. Man, he's the ultimate counselor. He's our teacher. He's our ter therapist. He's our tutor. He's our friend. He's our redeemer. He's the mighty God, the Prince of Peace, the everlasting Father. Would you step out and join us? Worship.